Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the fifth of five High Vault Web Talks. It is 5 p.m. live. We are broadcasting from Dresden. My name is Florian Schwarz and with me is, as in the last four shows, Dr. Uwe Kaltenborn, Head of Business Development at High Vault. Hello, Uwe. Hello. Uwe, where are we? In another hall, but on the location of High Vault. Yeah, it's our assembly hall where we assemble our reactors as well as the, our testing transformers. Huge. And uh, what we can see then here on this side is uh, one of the big reactors we mm -hmm. ha have manufactured here in the moment. There are six of these animals under production or final uh, assembly. So these are our XXL reactors for cable testing. So 50 tons of weight design frequency of are 10 hertz and uh, with a testing power then of 126 MVA. This is a really huge amount of energy which we need also for testing of super long cables. And another feature which is located in this hall is located on uh, our left side for you on your right side of the picture. We're going to have a look into it. What going to we see? Yeah, so this is our oven. This is the heart of uh, the manufacturing here as we see it right now. Yes, wonderful look inside, yeah. huge. This is a very huge oven, not for baking bread, <laughs> but uh, for, Dresdner Stollen. for trying <laughs> and impregnating then our active parts of the reactors and transformers. A lot of challenges that we are discussing today, of course, also with our experts. Our hot topic in this case today is super long DC cable links. Is it a chance or is it a risk? We will talk, of course, about both sides, as you can expect from this panel. And now we're going to see a little video about factory test system with these XXL reactors. Huge systems that we saw, that we talk about, all what you have seen in this short video. I want to present you our lineup of experts from today's session. First of all, Dr. Florian Martin. He's the head of corporate asset technology at Tenet. Um, he studied electrical engineering, high voltage technology at the Uni Karlsruhe. And he made his PhD in cooperation between the KIT, the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, and High Volt here in Dresden. He's a specialist for reactive power power compensation and at Tenet he is responsible for all equipment used in the Dutch and German on and offshore grid. Herzlich willkommen, hello Mr. Martin. Thank you very much. Then our next expert live here in the hall is Thomas Steiner. Actually, it's your birthday today. So on this side, we say happy birthday, but celebrating, of course, afterwards. Thomas Steiner is the technical director at High Vault here in Dresden. He studied electrical engineering in Coburg at the university there. And he founded the world first Deutsche Kalibrierdienst, the DKD. Under his leadership, um, some things were developed like DC test systems, test reactors, water resistance distances and of course much more and Thomas Steiner is a German speaker for TC42. Hello and welcome, nice that you are in our round. Hello. And then we see, uh, we say Buonasera to Milano, 
to Signore Tullio Sturchio. Um, he is responsible for technical school and services in the R&D uh, department of the Prismian Group. And um, he studied uh, electrical engineering in Rome at the university there. He had different stations, of course, at uh, Prismian, where he's still today working. And he's a specialist in the business of submarine cable systems. Buonasera, signore Sturchio. Buonasera. Good evening to everybody. Mr. Sturchio, I have the first statement in this round, in this afternoon, for you. Um, you say that the test on very long lengths is always, of course, a challenge. And every responsible engineer should go for it. 525 kV extruded DC land cables over 680 kilometers, nearly through whole Germany. The most exciting project in electrical engineering history. Is it a risk or a chance in your eyes? Okay, so regarding the statement uh, that I include, uh, that is uh, the test on dialogue cable is always a chance and every responsible engineer should go for it uh, because due to, to my uh, long experience in the business of submarine cable in which I, I attend many tests both in the factory and site. So I, I really consider the test on long cable uh, an experience and that we as an electric engineer have to, have to perform uh, this experience. Coming back to the other question, for sure, um, as an electric engineer, I confirm that the German Corridor project can be considered as the most exciting uh, one in the history for the long cable system interconnection. Uh, for sure, to have a 500 kV high voltage direct current cable system, but also for land application, not only for summer interconnection, for me is an incredible chance because it allows us uh, to transmit a huge power for a very long distance. This as a cable supplier truly believe that a 525 voltage uh, DC land cable is a chance and that the cable and uh, this cable will be the cable of the future. That's the reason why uh, in our Prisma, in our recent past, we made a lot of effort uh, to qualify and to develop and qualify not only cable with the standard compound available to the market, but also invest in your research focus on the use of a new in-house insulation material suitable for this high voltage that I carry 525 kilo per post. Thanks for the slide that illustrates all the effort made by Prismian in order to have not only one cable, but two cable qualified. Uh, as I told, the second one is called P laser, thermoplastic insulation material. Definitely is uh, in house insulation material with a lot of advantage in terms of uh, sustainability and uh, uh, with a very reduced life cycle analysis. Coming back, uh, as I told, for me, uh, this uh, is a chance. But uh, regarding the risk, every project has some risk. But the risk regard, uh, related to the cable system project can always be strongly mitigated by testing at every stage of the life of the project. So during research at the during research and development stage, uh, many internal tests were done to up to complete uh, an official PICU test. During manufacturing, we will perform many severe tests, control and test, high voltage tests in order to ensure the required uh, level of quality for our product. But at the end of the project, the final stage, after the installation, a commissioning test will allow to detect the presence of the fact coming from installation. Uh, so the risk is always present in the project, but testing is the correct tools to mitigate the testing. And this is the first time that for a long interconnection direct current, uh, we will be in the position to perform AC and also PD during the commission. This is a great opportunity for uh, the safety of the project to mitigate the typical risk uh, uh -huh. of a long interconnection.
So incredible chance and opportunity, of course. On the other side, uh, the risk. We have to evaluate this also during the talk. Uh, what is uh, stronger? Uh, coming to the statement of Thomas Steiner um, here at um, Highwald in Dresden, with the project to install super long DC cables in Germany, we can once again set standards with our worldwide partners. As uh, Senor Sturtio <laughs> also said, it is important to consider the physics and minimize the risk, of course. How can the risk be reduced? The risk can be reduced if you, we are looking uh, what is necessary to reduce the risk. And then we, could, we can look to the cable and see we had some unsolved uh, solutions, for example, how we measure uh, partial discharge, how we can test so long cables. Mm -hmm. As we started, nobody knows it uh, for two or three or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, for all these, problems, uh, different companies look for new solutions, they found solutions and with each solution we can really reduce the risk. You can reduce the risk. We discussed this also deeper on. Thank you. We're coming to Dr. Florian Martin from Tenet. Of course, um, first of all, you are asking some questions for an operator. A long list of questions are popping up. Is an on-site AC and PD after installation testing for ultra-long DC cable links reasonable? Is a DC test sufficient? How many failures can be found? Is a DC PD monitoring state of the art? What can we do to increase the availability of such links? All these questions lead to the main question, are there similar projects in history of this size and these challenges? Yeah, that's interesting uh, questions for us as a system operator um, because uh, the main uh, aim what drives us is of course a high availability and uh, so I think we can uh, do s uh, some sections for the project. Uh, we are in the preparation phase, we started uh, quickly after the decision was taken to have these super long cables uh, within German corridor projects, we started with this uh, German TSO PQ test for the 525 kV HVDC um, cables and this was done successfully and this was also uh, the decision basis uh, to have these new innovative um, uh, technology mm -hmm. within all these corridor projects because if you look uh, to the uh, extended version when we look to the uh, grid development plan of uh, 2030 mm -hmm. uh, we see about uh, three and a half thousand kilometer or even four thousand kilometers of HVDC links and we see uh, the necessity uh, to to have this bulk uh, power transportation. Um, your question regarding these uh, technical uh, risks um, and that is what we are looking from the availability side on it. Uh, of course uh, we have um, not only the cable system uh, with the joints but we have uh, the uh, Elbe river crossing in mm -hmm. one of these big projects which is in project itself. Um, we need to adapt of course the organization. Um, we have a, a supplier management which is uh, tremendous different to normal projects we do. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, uh, what is really new for a system operator, uh, we have um, an external project execution companies and we need to put these all together uh, to have at the end uh, a successful uh, project. And uh, if we are uh, commissioning uh, mm -hmm. date is there, then afterwards we have a lot of things uh, which are in my comments regarding this uh, monitoring and how can we uh, have this high availability we plan to have uh, during operation. Just a short follow-up question to this. I mean, talking about a, a period of time until 2030, we have another 11 years. That sounds not so long. What are the technical risks on the one side and the organi organizational challenges to realize a project like this? Yeah, when we see um, the uh, development we have to drive, this is not only for the cable, but it's also for the uh, maintenance phase, so yeah. after commissioning, uh, that we need uh, to look into the monitoring systems. Uh, very important is also uh, a very quick uh, fault location, what we will discuss later on also in our web talk today. Um, and uh, from the organization, it's not only internally for a transmission system operation uh, operator, uh, it's also, of course, uh, the public, because the public is involved a lot uh, when we have these massive uh, projects uh, 
in the surrounding of each and every uh, household. Oh, it's technical, it's organizational, uh, and the maintenance uh, uh, thematic um, coming to um, Uwe for a quick statement to this um, comment about this uh, technical, organizational and political now, I think it's important to mention that, especially here, uh, the need of temporary facilities to do such a project uh, with a distance every 20 kilometers of the, of, of the cable project. And uh, that's uh, what was already mentioned. And the participation of uh, all stakeholders is then a very important issue. And there are also organizations like uh, the German Electrical Engineering Organization, VDE, is then also uh, very much supportive to that with studies and uh, other things. Does it take sometimes diplomatic sensitivity to connect all these partners, bring them to a round table? Yeah, for sure. So, but I think uh, that's something uh, what uh, Florian Martin can answer much better, that uh, what the effort means to bring all these, these stakeholders around the table. Excellent. W would you adjust something to this? This is absolutely uh, correct uh, what, what Uwe says because uh, we stuffed uh, the project itself with a lot of uh, peoples which were not used before or which we have not had this experience within a, a system operator uh, that they do all these public affairs. Um, they they um, trying to reach the people mm -hmm. um, that we can really perform this project. It's always, of course, uh, um, yeah, also a lack of information sometimes that people are missing. On the other side, you want to give the information, but you want to have the technical improvement. All this is to discuss, and it's very uh, challenging times right now, but very important also. Coming uh, to uh, Mr. Sturkio in uh, Italy, in, in Milano, at Prismian, um, what makes an extruded DC cable so special? You showed already some pictures. Um, what makes it so special? Uh, a student cable for DC system able uh, to operate at so high voltage is so special. It can be considered so special because it allows to transmit uh, a huge amount of power for an extreme long length. If uh, we consider uh, the field of application for AC and DC versus uh, the distance, uh, so it means it's clear that only uh, a DC cable system rated at very high voltage uh, make feasible a project like the German corridor, in which uh, we can transmit uh, a huge amount of power for a very long distance. Okay. If you see at this slide, you can see as the AC cable is uh, dedicated for short distance uh, for reduced uh, power. After you are uh, in order to increase uh, the distance, reducing the losses, or make it feasible uh, the, the transmission, we need this sort of cable. And a project like the German corridor can be realized only with this cable. And uh, so that's make uh, this cable uh, so special. That's, uh, that's why Prismian consider uh, so this cable uh, is so special because uh, uh, this is a result of ERO effort that has been finalized uh, with uh, all the pre-qualification tests that is able to guarantee the maximum reliability. But uh, we have, to, uh, repeat, we have to consider this cable will allow us uh, to transmit uh, very a huge amount of power, and uh, that's why our system. Because we always speak about cable, but we have to consider cable plus accessory. All our effort is made to have the maximum reliability for systems of cable plus accessory. And uh, all our tests carried out up to now, the PICU test, uh, the official PICU test completed uh, last year, uh, provide us uh, the result of the maximum reliability for our uh, system. Could you give us a short insight how long does the development of this cable take? How, how many years are we talking? If we consider for uh, for sure, for if we talk about Excel, the commercial product the Excel PA, so we the product we started in the last of last century, and the development was made in step because before we qualified at 200, after 300 kilo, we realize uh, and was uh, commissioned to. 2006, the first uh, direct current uh, submarine uh, long interconnection with extruded cable 250 in, uh, in 
US mm-hmm. after we passed to the 320. So we have uh, step by step qualified the material, starting from uh, more than 20 years of, uh, of research. Yeah. But this was made in, st- in step. The same for the new material, the in-house material, uh, more than 20 years ago, was started from the medium voltage up to arrive at the very high voltage, not only for the AC, but also for the direct current. Mm-hmm. So it's a result of more than 20 years of uh, work and effort. And of course, always ready for new challenges, giving uh, this question about uh, talking about the cables uh, in the round here to uh, Thomas Steiner. What are the critical components of a DC cable system? Uh, critical, critical components are not the cable itself. The mm-hmm. cable itself is very well tested and it's, uh, I think, a very good quality. The, the main problem which we have are the joints and the uh, end terminations uh, mm-hmm. and to, uh, to laying the cable. Because during these steps, we need a lot of hand working, and uh, a lot of people must do this work on site, and it's very difficult to get a high quality on site for all these work. Mm-hmm. And this is the reason why we must testing later on this with different methods to find out the mistakes inside of this uh, manual work of the assembly of these uh, parts. So it's not the cable itself, you say. Uh, Florian Martin, to you the question, what in your eyes is the critical or are the critical components in the cable system? Yeah, the cable system that lays uh, what the critical part is because the system needs to work together. So uh, it's not the cable itself, uh, it's uh, the accessories, um, so especially the joints, of course. Um, but we have also the terminations in the system. Um, and when we, when we took a little bit of broader view on it, uh, I think what is uh, for this uh, extra long cable really an interesting part are the uh, transients uh, traveling along uh, the cable in the interface to the HVDC converter um, because uh, you could also imagine that you will have some failures and then uh, the DC cable system and that means the cable itself with all the accessories needs to withstand uh, these uh, special um, uh, voltages uh, and that makes it so special and a bit different to the things we have seen before. Uwe, I would like to jump uh, in. Yeah. I would like to jump uh, uh, component, uh, Of course, a for a yeah. second, Tulio. Yeah, because, uh, yes, yeah, and I then Uwe. I fully agree from our experience on site, uh, uh, not only in direct current system, but also in AC system, the access, so it could be considered a critical component because during commissioning, in the first period of, uh, of service, uh, Fulton joint were well experienced, and mainly was for human mistake during the assembly. So the huge number of joints that have to be installed make is a critical aspect. And this is an aspect that uh, for sure I want to mitigate. The first step was a strong training for the operator, but also to introduce a new system of quality control on site, one up, uh, thanks for the slide. So one app uh, that is available for the joint uh, on the mobile device that can assist the joint during the installation because and can assure the respect, uh, the, the availability of the correct uh, joint instruction, drawing procedure, touchability of the project, of the, the product, and also the storage of all the critical information as quality check. The quality check that are made during the assembly, like the positioning of the sleeve, can be also recorded also with some picture. All this uh, quality check will be storage on the server available, so the quality control of the system has been uh, strongly improved for this project due to the huge number of joints that we have. But as a prisoner, I would like to make also mm-hmm. another con- consideration because now, which is not only the control on the joint uh, yes. can uh, improve the quality of, uh, of the system, but also the test, as I told before, to mitigate uh, the, on the cable and accessory to mitigate and find the right product, the test is test bank method to discriminate us. Also, for in this case, it will be the first time, thanks uh, to the new kit of Violt, uh, we will have the possibility to test in a C, including also the uh, DPD monitor, and this is the best method to discriminate the fact on the accessory. 
because you know discriminate uh, defect on the accessory sometimes the high voltage or direct current is not able to inject the, the discharge up to a breakdown but just inject some discharge that anyway this discharge is the start of the defect that manifests itself during the first period of service and the possibility to catch the signal with the PD measurement is uh, the best method to discriminate uh, the potential defect coming from the accessory on site. So you see there's a lot in the cable system. Uwe, um, another comment from your side, please. Yeah. So I, I only wanted to try to introduce uh, one question from our chat, and uh, that was exactly dedicated to uh, how the cable joining, how the uh, assembly of the joints can be monitored, and uh, that was exactly then also the introduction of the slide we have shown here. And I think the supervision of the joiners with this uh, new technologies, uh, that's really something what uh, could contribute for improved quality for the uh, join, work on the joints. Excellent. And in case you hear it raining in Dresden, it's quite like um, a little apocalyptic, <laughs> apocalyptic rain shower, but uh, I think uh, we're going to are all uh, dry and uh, wet. Um, and uh, before we starting in the round, of course, you can participate as all four times, uh, also today the fifth times via our chat or via email. You can sometimes uh, also answer the questions of your colleagues in the chat and uh, or you can ask the questions also to your colleagues. We are coming in a minute. Uh, to Uwe, he's collecting all the questions. Um, and Uwe, is there is, um, also one point uh, that you want to bring in about um, a question to um, to Florian? Yep. So, uh, as I have worked for some of the VDE ETG engineering groups of the, uh, here in Germany on uh, the future concepts for the transmission grid. So I have there one question related to a very interesting news some weeks ago where Tenet Netherlands has called the cable manufacturers for a consortia to develop together an offshore 525 DC cable. So my question to Florian is, would that not have been an excellent chance also for the German projects? And I know that uh, as author of one of the studies, we have recommended that. <laughs> Interesting question. Yeah, so when we are talking about the cable itself again, um, it is uh, a bit different uh, what uh, Tulio definitely can spend also some words about, but uh, what you have uh, is for, uh, for us the next evolution stadium for the cable uh, because you have to include then these factory joints to get these uh, extra long cables which you have on a turntable on the ship. Um, then you have uh, different cable armors uh, within uh, the cable. Uh, because you have, of course, uh, special mechanical stresses um, when you have these sea cables and uh, you end up in a, in a much bigger weight for such a sea cable than you have it onshore. And uh, there you can see then in the end um, that you have uh, problems to transport this cable over land because we are talking about um, uh, quite urbanized uh, um, Germany where you need to transport these big drums from north to south or south to north depending on uh, where, where they land on um, and uh, so we see it as an evolution and we will see them also in the two gigawatt uh, HVDC platforms we will have for offshore in the future, also in the German Sea. So it's uh, not restricted to the Netherlands uh, and we will combine it with Netherlands and Germany and use them for the two gigawatt uh, offshore platforms in future uh, also. So you see behind is always, of course, the art of uh, uh, making uh, connections and consortia. So it's an ongoing process, of course. And we are halfway through to our fifth session of uh, the High Vault Web Talk. Our subject today is super long DC cable links, chance or risk. We talked a lot uh, already about this. And we hope that you're all still with us uh, all over the world. We are broadcasting to the west and to the east, to the south and to the north, um, always um, at five Central European time we are starting and Uwe, you th I think you collected already some questions maybe you could like share with us. 
Yeah, so uh, today it's uh, for me a little bit challenging to uh, collect these questions and also to combine it in the right way. Uh, let's start maybe with uh, the last question which came in or which I put on my list. Um, do you have a reference of a successful project to make decision using super long DC cable links in Germany? Who can answer this? You're all invited. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is no reference uh, we have, but uh, of course we have experience with the 320 kV. Uh, we have seen the extruded cables also in the offshore area. And uh, don't forget, if we're talking about offshore, we see also a big part uh, onshore uh, cabling. So we have uh, 320 kV around about 100 kilometers also onshore, uh, but uh, there is no real comparable um, yeah, challenge project uh, we see now for our corridor projects in Germany. Yeah. Mr. Steiner wants something to say to this uh, subject? I think that is all is said. Uh, we can't Honestly. say not more. <laughs> okay. Uwe? There's another challenging question or several questions which I would like to put together and that's the questions about sustainability or reliability or availability so I think we should focus that on uh, availability of the DC links so I think this is a question which goes to, to you as well as to Florian uh, so what is the expectation are for the availability of the DC links. So when we have 680 kilometers, and mm -hmm. that means every 1.2 kilometers to have one joint. Yeah, we, uh, of course, uh, when there was a political decision taken uh, not to have an overhead line for these corridor projects, um, we started calculating the availability um, for these cable projects, because it, of course, makes not no sense if we start doing a project like this, um, and we don't have availability and uh, we made a lot of calculations and in the end we came up that we calculate uh, availability of 95% uh, of the year because you have down uh, times uh, for maintenance of course and there is statistically if you calculate it you can see that you will have cable and joints failure of course but uh, that is uh, what is uh, calculated also uh, from the economic perspective for these availability of 95% plus. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll give it to uh, Tulio, the question to the cable maker. Uh, yes, uh, for sure, as a cable maker, as a cable maker, so we don't, uh, so as we told, uh, we consider as a chance and the risk is part of the project, but it's very limited, so we can consider also to the to the experience and the test uh, already performed uh, in order to qualify the simulator life. Uh, we don't expect different uh, uh, behavior considering the, the previous project done in Carver 320. It is uh, already installed and in service. We don't uh, we don't see it as a critical aspect. Uh, after all the test and the qualification done. Uwe, we have time for one or two more questions. Yeah, so there's one question I, I think we can answer very, very quickly. That was related to our uh, slide we have shown from the uh, crossing of the Elbe River. So there, I think it was not totally clear what the technology was behind, <coughs> was behind there. And the question is, which option is available to cross a one kilometer uh, river other than a submarine cable? And I think the answer is building a tunnel. And I think uh, Florian can put some additional comments on that as well. Yeah, because uh, the Elbe uh, is quite heavily frequent uh, shipping used. So uh, we were not allowed uh, just to lay a submarine cable uh, to the Elbe uh, River to cross it. Uh, so we decided, uh, um, or the decision was in the end taken, um, to have this tunnel. Um, it's an infrastructure tunnel. And uh, yes, for this part, because then it's not only this kilometer of the Alp, but you have 
the so-called uh, Alte Land uh, on both sides of the Elbe River in Germany, yeah. uh, where we need to extend this tunnel a little bit. And really what we're trying to do is there to have a one-piece cable under the Elbe River in this tunnel. And that means, therefore, we need uh, also this special application, which is not in, in the length of a normal cable. So this will be around, it depends a little bit, uh, of four, uh, even five kilometers, what we have to lay under the Alp. Mm -hmm. But this is the challenging part, like to find solutions here for every uh, yeah, river, for every mountain, for sometimes also properties that are difficult to uh, traverse. Uwe, one last question in our summary just um, at the moment, or do you want to come on later? No, I think uh, there are other uh, questions we will answer later on. Yeah. So we should continue uh, with the topics we have on our list, and uh, we will have then a second round for the uh, questions from the chat function. Excellent. We are starting in the second half of our web talk here, uh, going to Milano to uh, Tullio Sturchio from okay. Prismian. Um, Tullio, what kind of testing should be done in the factory? In the factory, uh, for sure, we will uh, follow during the production a very severe quality control. And at the end of the production, for sure, uh, the test, uh, the high voltage test, uh, will be done according to the uh, to the requirement of the standard for uh, direct, direct cable. It means that we will perform AC test and. Uh, DC test. Both the tests will be performed in order to guarantee the required quality of the product. I repeat that the test is at the final stage of the production after that the product has been strictly controlled by quality control in order to assure the quality of, uh, of the product and the respect of the technology. Great, thank you very much. This is a question about uh, what tests should be done in the factory. Thomas Steiner, testing the cable on site, of course, is a big challenge. I mean, you have all the uh, challenges outside, the rain, the river, what we see. What needs to be tested to guarantee the proper installation of the joints? You mentioned already the joints and the terminations. Yeah, um, to test uh, on site, uh, we have two different methods. One method is a DC uh, method for measuring the cable with DC. And DC has a big problem that we can't uh, uh, measure inside of the joints. A partial discharge is very difficult at the moment with the actual solutions. That means we, we have decided to test the cables with AC on site mm -hmm. with a because for AC tests and uh, measure Partial discharge in the joints, we have nearly 100 years experience or 50 years experience. That means then we can say the uh, joint is okay or not. This is the reason why we want to make AC tests on site. On site, all right. Going to Florian, um, what kind of testing is requested after repairing the cable? When yeah, um, because we are talking about uh, a DC link, uh, so that means we have this direct current and what occur in the cable uh, is also these uh, space charges. And so if we have a quick repair, uh, we will only test with an uh, DC test and not have this AC partial discharge testing in addition, because the second uh, big point is to, uh, to have a high availability, what we discussed before. It's very important to have uh, a very short downtime and these ACPD testing uh, takes uh, a lot of lot of effort and that means uh, if we can save these time the link is up and running uh, quicker again and that means if we had this op in operation we will only do an HVDC test afterward. Okay, so we talked about the in the factory testing, the on-site testing and after repairing. Um, Uwe, to this um, yeah, I subject. Think, uh, here uh, we should jump are in directly because there we have also a slide already prepared. There was a question in the chat function, how many reactors are needed to do an AC test? And I think it's not so easy to answer this question, but I think, Thomas, uh, you can uh, take up on that and uh, I will try to figure out also the right slide. So how many reactors? 
how many reactors is depending of the cable type and the length of the cable through which we want to test. And we have different types of reactors. So we had the so-called, we call it standard uh, reactors, which are on, on site. For the, with the standard reactors, you need round about um, for 20 kilometers, um, I'm not sure, uh, seven, round about seven reactors. Uh, can't read it on the slide. Exactly. <laughs> for seven, it's <laughs> around about 40, 40, seven, but, 40 kilometers. But, but, and if you use the bigger reactors, depending on the design of the bigger reactors, three or four, depends mm -hmm. of the type. Normally, we can use for the big reactors, for one of the big reactors, uh, we use one of the big or four of the standard reactors. Okay. So this is a... This is your daily business, of course, to bring this exactly what the client needs. Yes, we must calculate each cable separately and then we can say exactly if we have the cable data for this project you need, for example, five, six or seven. And of course you can arrange these reactors we like uh, next to each other, over on top yes. of each other. We, we can use it in parallel and in, the end in series. That means we can increase also the voltage. It's not at the moment necessary, but we can go up to 400 or 500 kV and we can uh, put the in parallel and in a parallel connection we can go up to 100 or 140 kilometers if it's necessary or longer. So this long experience here shows that a lot of flexibility is in the system, Uwe. Um, another question to this part of the different testing right now, not from the chat. Then we continue and uh, we're going to Signore Tullio Sturchio in Milano. Uh, Prismian is offering, the company you're working long years uh, already, and is offering an integrated fiber optical temperature surveillance. What else can you measure with an optical fiber in a cable system? Okay. So the power cable is equipped uh, with the four fiber optical unit placed under the metallic sheet. Each unit uh, can accommodate uh, six fiber. So this uh, will allow us to, um, to, to make a monitoring of the temperature with the use of DTS. So the DTS, distribute Temperature uh, System, uh, have, been, uh, have been offered. And uh, I saw another slide that, uh, no, I saw a slide because in order to aglite another uh, potential of the fiber, because the fiber can also uh, use for transmit the signal and to provide um, a PD monitoring during a C-test of all the joint, because this uh, fiber can be also have some, uh, let me say, use it for other reason, because, you know, we can place the sensor uh, for the PD that uh, transmit to the uh, uh, unit for, uh, uh, to collect the signal, the signal has to be transmitted. Uh, one use of the fiber optic is also to use it uh, to transmit uh, the signal. Because, you know, the PD is always possible. If you place the sensor, you have the acquisition unit and you can read the, the signal, but we cannot place uh, people everywhere leading, so we have to transmit. You can transmit uh, with the 4G, but it's quite difficult to have uh, the entire line. Or the fiber optic can be used also for this uh, for this purpose. Yeah. Another purpose that now make very popular uh, the, the, the use of the fiber inside the cable is to have also the DAS, the distributed acoustic system. So that uh, the fiber is not only for the measure of the temperature in order to have an expectation of the real load that is uh, traversing, uh, that is uh, crossing uh, the interconnection and the partition of the hotspot, but to give also an idea of, uh, let me say, the acoustic event that could occur uh, along the system and could be very useful in case the acoustic si this, uh, system is always switched on with record in case of failure. It can give immediate uh, depositioning of the, the failure due to the signal that uh, can be recorded. So the fiber and along the, uh, integrated with the cable uh, give uh, a lot of flexibility, can be used in many, in many, in many use. 
So as you told before, the the the, the first uh, use is for the temporal distribution system in order to have the, the temporal. But also in this, I would like to add like the one uh, two point uh, that in order to have the DTS the work properly, you have to give the indication of the right value in the right position. It means that this system has to be. Uh, correctly installed with the correct calibration in order to have the correct algorithm that from the, the temporal measure on the external of the of the semiconductor can give the indication of the temperature and the correct mapping in order to have the correct position because you know the length the physical length of the conductor and the fiber is, is different sometimes I know that on from side some strange information arrived, but because these two information, these two items was not well considered during the installation. So yeah. please be considered fundamental at the DTS, but with the right installation for calibration and mapping. Mm -hmm. It's good to know that you have all these measuring systems. Here we were talking about the fiber optical yeah, yeah. temperature surveillance and um, giving the question to uh, Florian Martin, the availability of the cable system is of course critical and uh, system. You want to add something, Uwe? Yeah, no, uh, because at that point in time, so I have yeah. another question from the chat and uh, that's what I would like to put in here because uh, I think we went over that without going into details, but it's a very important question. I, if you can give an, uh, a clear value for the uh, uh, voltage test at factory, so uh, what are the voltage levels to be tested, the 525 kV or in your case, the 600 kV or DC cable in the factory. What are the, the, the test ratings? Do we have there a quick answer? Yes, I am. Because for, uh, for sure, as a cable supply, we follow the recommendation of the Sigre publication on the direct current system. So the direct current test at the end of the production is 185 um, U0. So, is 1.85 the 525 uh, kilovolt. We follow the uh, the standard. Uh, four days is not required. It's not mentioned to the value required. We use our experience and we consider an appropriate value, something around the 22 kilovolt per millimeter on the internal semiconductor, the right uh, test lever for racing. That is this fine. Is, uh, uh, yeah. This is uh, dedicated for the 525 kilovolt. Great. Thank you for the short answer, Florian. Um, the availability of the cable systems um, is, of course, critical from the system perspective and from the commercial perspective. How important is fault location and quick fault location? Yeah, high performance fault location is a must and that was uh, for us also the starting point um, a couple of years ago that we said um, normally we have to calculate uh, seven days or that the experience we have from offshore uh, that we need at least seven days uh, to pinpoint to locate the fault and then you have around about 14 days to repair uh, with a joint or with two. Um, so very important is uh, that we reduce these time and uh, what Tushio also said is um, also these uh, fiber optics within the cable can help us because very often uh, you can see a temperature rise or a hot spot in the cable where you see the fault afterwards. So that means if we see a fault with a temperature monitoring or a high, uh, we, we see only the hot spot of course, uh, but then we know if there is a fault in this location around, it's probably uh, um, uh, these exactly this location. Um, uh, you can also do this by this acoustic um, uh, usage, so the uh, uh, distributed acoustic sensoring. Um, and then uh, if we can reduce, and that's the idea, uh, the fault location uh, from seven days to one day, uh, that means a big increase for 30% of the availability of the link because to reduce the repair time uh, is much more difficult because there you have to dig, uh, you have uh, to do the jointing, uh, you have to do the testing afterwards and uh, what we also did and have already a pilot installation in offshore uh, is an online fault, uh, online fault location system together with high volt um, where in the in the moment when the um, failure occur, 
the system detect the fault location uh, and that is quite promising because then you don't have to pinpoint afterwards or just to pinpoint to have again a bit more uh, accuracy uh, on the location uh, but uh, we invested a lot uh, and triggered the market to come up with developments on that because this is a, a crucial part uh, of the for the availability. Mm -hmm. And you see all this measurement is really important and of course the connection between the different partners. Uh, giving the question to Thomas Steiner, the technical director here at High Vault, uh, which technical solutions are available at the moment? At the moment uh, we have described the te technical uh, solutions. Well, one is the fiber optics, the other is a direct measurement of the signal, the fault, loca fault location, and at the moment not more. I know some companies are working on new methods, and really new methods, but at the moment they are not available. That means, actual, it's only this breakdown which you see on the slide. That means uh, the fault location system waits on a breakdown, and the breakdown uh, produces uh, wave shapes, uh, and the wave shapes are running through the cable and the time which is need for running to the end and back to the fault and back to the end we are measure and, and then we can calculate the real fault place. Mm -hmm. so it's an easy method really, an easy method but you can find very fast few minutes and you have the fault place. And of course you have always an eye on new technologies and, and look at this to reduce the time when a fault is detected that you can quickly react. Yes. Definitely great. So these super long DC cables as we learned today of course is a challenge for the whole industry um, with all the partners uh, we were talking and discussing today. Of course we could certainly answer some questions, not all questions. We can like continue of course after the session to uh, answer questions in the next day. Super long DC cable links chance or risk Uwe, what would you sum up to say what you learned from this hour and what you learned from your experience in the industry. Yeah, so bridging 680 kilometers with an HVDC cable system at 525 kV, this is a real technological as well as organizational challenge. We have heard about that in the first part of our session today. And I think with the discussion we had today, we could prove that we have there an intense collaboration and cooperation between the TSO, the transmission system operator, the manufacturers, uh, the manufacturers of test equipment and all together uh, we have joined forces and this is key to prepare, execute as well and operate such an important project for the energy transition here in Germany and uh, this is also required to lower our ecological footprint because this is our main key solution to reduce the CO2 footprint in the German energy system. And very complex and of course in between this proce process and that's why we had this round of talks um, and of course today here had this talk. Uwe, and I come to you, we join and we're taking our experts here in the middle because ladies and gentlemen at this time, yeah, come on, we make a yeah. nice round <laughs> together, Uwe on the side, I'm on this side. Or oh, no, you want, Uwe, you have something for me. Uh, I don't know, so I always <laughs> ask me, uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, is, I have you something see, for you. You see, this is live, this is live as we calculated it, but for the first, no, for, no, no, first, we, I, stay, I stay in the protocol. <laughs> Uwe, what is the outlook for the future concerning these web talks or concerning kind of this format to discuss with the industry? Yeah, so uh, we still have also some questions in the, our chat function and uh, that goes into the direction of, for instance, switching problems in DC and multi-terminal DC systems. So I have suppressed them a little bit because I think that would be too challenging for our experts today. For that, we would need other experts. So the intention is that we would like to continue that uh, format here. And for that, we would like to uh, ask also all our our uh, participants in, in that session to come up with topics which are interesting for you and uh, where we're looking then around to find the right experts in 
and bring them together in such a round and uh, to look that we can then organize a second season of the High World Web Talk. And this is the charm of these hybrid um, models that we have, these hybrid formats, that you can be an expert, like Tulio um, is broadcasting from uh, Milano. We have live experts here. So please bring in your subjects, your topics, everything what is interesting in the industry, send it via the chat or via email to you, to Highvolt. Both channels are possible. The chat is still on right now. Otherwise, we have the address of webtalk at highvolt.com. So there you can put in your, uh, your questions as well as your recommendations or the topics of interest for the next season. And this is then really interactive because we are connecting and certainly also uh, curating these topics and maybe making uh, some more shows and to bring you these subjects with the experts to your office or wherever you watch us, some certainly at home, some in the office. So thank you very much to the experts of this round, Thomas Steiner and Florian Martin. Thank you very much, Uwe. Thank you very much to our team in the background. Um, perfect broadcasting, perfect technique and Uwe now. Yeah, this you card. Want always to see what I have on my yeah. moderation card. So this is the magical card. This is the moderation card. Normally, from this side, it's a regular high vault card. I turn it around. This is very interactive right now, and I see a kangaroo on the one side, a kangaroo, and on the other side, I see three guys not so happy. Who, no, the guys who is are, who? <laughs> no, the guys are happy because that are you three, because you are happy to talk about technical things. At yes. home of some of our colleagues <laughs> and also from uh, some of the colleagues which are watching our uh, season, the kids are not so happy that you always have to look to that and they would like to see more the kangaroo and uh, this funny kangaroo, this is something which is new from Germany and uh, what I know that will also jump around the world and... Uh, Well it's even in a movie. It's a movie. Please join. Yeah. And this movie yeah, will be also you know <laughs> go around the world and hopefully as viral as we have seen that here in Germany. And this total, uh, this kangaroo is totally analog. In uh, it's not digital. It's it's an analog. No, it's really funny in things like that. You watched us via the net. You go to the movies when you can again watch the kangaroo. Watch our high vault next uh, high vault web talks um, in the next times. Of course, we inform you at this time. You get us. Of course, the chocolate church, um, as all our experts, you get a chocolate church from the, the Chocolate Frauenkirche. Mm -hmm. And we say thank you very much for your participation. And we say good night. And of course, to Tulio also, sorry. Tulio, you were on the, uh, still connected with us. You're watching us. Thank you very much. And we say yeah. buona sera and good night. And auf Wiedersehen aus Dresden. Bye-bye. And, and, and finally, finally, my special thanks to our, all our colleagues in the background here at High World, so all the guys around uh, um, <coughs> Udo and Ron with all the workers here because they have organized uh, every time that we have these nice backgrounds here for the seasons yeah. and uh, that was a great Great job they have done. Thank you very much. Also, thanks to uh, our IT department, which, which make it really working here so that we have this live stream all the time on. And also, special, special, special thanks to my team in the background, which uh, were always starting on Thursday to prepare the one-hour session mm -hmm. on the next Wednesday. And we have not expected what it really means to do a one-hour live session. Now we know. And this is also the big thank you going out to the world. Thank you very much, Uwe, Florian, Thomas. Good night. And Tulio, ciao, auf Wiedersehen. Now ciao. Auf it's finished for the moment.